Hello, and welcome back to... I'm Sint. I'm Axiom. And we are continuing through our playthrough of Final Fantasy V while we listen to the best song. And our read-through of the slash discussion of Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. Last time we talked about how the world of Harry Potter was getting a little bit more serious to ramp up for the uh, rest of the series. And, well, that kind of segues us right into some of the darker topics that it begins to address. Such as the wonderful question of, just what does a wizard have to do to get life in prison? Well, so far, to answer that question literally, we have two examples. We have... Hagrid, who was sent to Azkaban because of the threat that he was assumed to pose as a suspect in the uh, in the events of. Uh, Oh, right. Forgot about this guy. Um. <laughs> right, we need to. He looks like a scyther. Um. Uh, the events of, uh. Why can't I. Uh, Chamber of Secrets! Era Slytherin. Chamber of Secrets. I could not remember for the life of me the name of the book. <laughs> Just sitting here, like, sound it out. No, it was <laughs> my brain completely blanked on the name of the book. Well, so and yeah, then, we have Hagrid. And then we have. Uh, uh, Sirius in Prisoner of Azkaban, who was imprisoned for. The s suspicion of the murder of several muggles and one wizard, as well as collaboration with Voldemort. Okay, so in both of those, we kind of have our tie-in with where this was going to go. Of uh, both of those involved crimes against Muggle blood, because Hagrid's uh, Hagrid was framed for being the heir of Slytherin who exclusively attacked the Muggleborns at Hogwarts, it, it killing Myrtle and uh, petrifying others. So, and in Sirius's case, the muggle bystanders on the street that Pettigrew blew up and he took the fall for. So both cases were harm and murder targeted at a specific group that is noted to be protected, AKA hate crimes. So, that's fun. We have brought up the concept of magic hate crimes, which is always going to be a smooth sailing highway to fun town, isn't it? Yep. Oh, look. Kido is almost dead. I'm still going to call him Cypher. But, yeah. We also see others who have been sentenced to life in Azkaban. Basically, anybody who was a Death Eater who couldn't, you know, bribe or confess their way out. Like, uh, we know that Snape turned against Voldemort and D Dumbledore vouched for him. I don't believe Crouch was very happy about that. Um, we have confirmation that Karkaroth just started giving out names of his fellow Death Eaters to save his own skin. Um, Barty Crouch Jr. was sentenced to life in Azkaban. Um, it only got out because his dad played the system with Polyjuice Potions. Yep. But, and his crime was um, specifically not murder, but torture. Not of a uh, not of a Muggleborn, but of two wizards who happened to be uh, working for the Ministry in the hopes that they could torture them into giving up the location of Voldemort to bring him back. So, it's not just hate crimes that can send you there, but also the use of the unforgivable curses. 
kind of makes you wonder why there are only three, given how awful some of the other spells you can throw that people can be, but... I'm sure that was explained at some point later in the series, but I can't remember it right now. If nothing else, it's probably retconned in a tweet. That is probably also true. I don't know, I don't read Twitter. But, yeah. So, the Imperious Curse, um, obviously, as we mentioned in our recap, gives you control over the person unless they have a strong enough will to fight you off. The Cruciatus Curse is just magical pain. It inflicts pain until the uh, caster decides to stop inflicting it. That is what um, Crouch and Lestrange used on the long bottoms until their minds fractured. Do you really gotta feel bad for Neville? Because you might recall, because as we mentioned, I think I mentioned this in the recap, Neville probably knows exactly what happened to his parents and had to watch that spell being used on the spider in class. Which, at the time, we did not know was being cast by the person who did that to his parents. So, yep. makes that even worse. And then, obviously, there's the murder curse, which, uh... Is the is one that gets all the court. attention as well. Well, it's big, flashy, and green, and only one person has ever survived it, because the wands don't work right or something, and also mo mothers love magic and stuff, but yeah. Also, it's got a very memorable incantation, which... It's basically just abracadabra. And Rowling has straight up admitted that. So, let me make this awful. Harry and Voldemort's wands are connected, right? Mm-hmm. And that means they produce a special magic effect. So because they have a link cable, their abracadabra becomes Alakazam. I knew that's where you were going. I was like, this is going to turn into a Pokemon pun. I'm glad you caught it. <sighs> well, you can have a lot worse mods on your team than Alakazam, so I'll, I'll allow it this time. Also, mostly because I can't really stop you. <laughs> right. Anyway, back to the horrific crimes of the Wizarding World. So, something else to note here is just the degree to which people react to these. Like, obviously, Azkaban is the worst possible place that you could send a wizard. It is staffed by inhuman monsters, literally the Dementors, who suck out any sense of joy or happiness you could ever have. And may so, eat your soul if they get a little peckish. Yeah, or if they're allowed to. So, yeah. To the point where Dumbledore even expresses at the end, we need to get the Dementors away from Azkaban because um, you are you know that Voldemort, now that he's back, is going to offer them the chance just to go and eat whatever they want. And Fudge says, no, they are safety! And people feel safe with them there, and Dumbledore's just like... Bruh. But, yeah, so we have an island prison full of the most dangerous wizards known to mankind, and really, as soon as you get away from a Dementor, you start being able to be normal again. So, they have had no rehabilitation at all in the time they've been in there been forced to relive the worst parts of their lives, which is probably going to give most people a long, festering resentment of the system that put them in there in the first place, one heck of an axe to grind, and also monsters that they can just point at anybody they don't like. It is an absolute recipe for disaster stew. And, yeah, that has been a very, very well-primed pump. So, I guess we should also bring up the dark marks if we're going to fall under this, because, um, well, the way Arthur Weasley described it, it's like, you'd come home and, and see it over your house and dread what you would find inside. That, to me, sounds very much like, um, not to define a point on it, a flaming cross from another hooded, uh, masked supremacist group. I, I would do have not think that was. I do not think that was an accident. I would have in instinctively gone with a swastika, but also not wrong. I don't remember if like 
Nazi SWAT teams or hit teams or whatever the heck the SS did would like announce their presence in a threatening way or if they would just bust in and take you and your family off to jail. Whereas the KKK was very much visible intimidation because they're off. Yeah. Yeah. I... <sighs> I do not like talking about these things because there's just not a good way to talk about them because you'd think we weren't in a time where we had to keep reminding people that, you know, maybe you shouldn't do murders on people who look a little different from you or have different ancestry, but... Here we are. But... Yeah, so this book is where we get introduced to them, and we act we get to see these curses used all in full. Like, when Harry is sent off to Voldemort, all three of those curses are used in pretty rapid succession. Cedric gets hit with Avada Kedavra, Harry gets it thrown at him as well, um, Dumbledore, uh, sorry, Dumbledore, Voldemort, all, why did all these wizards have complicated names? So, Voldemort uses the Imperius curse on him, and the Cruciatus curse, one right after the other, and... Yeah, it's... We're told right away that these are bad things that can get you sent off to ask them for life, so of course our villain has no compunctions about using them. But we also see that he also has a lot of friends in pretty highly positioned places. Uh, Voldemort even mentions a couple of them as being fairly decently ranked within the Ministry of Magic, which means Fudge's hierarchy has already been infiltrated because they didn't clean up their mess after the whole, uh, you know, Voldemort's downfall situation, which brings to mind the 14th Amendment and, um, at least in the U.S., of uh, maybe if you are caught doing these things, we need to point out that you don't get to hold office. And Which, uh... Really stop in, talking about that. I was about to say, in, modern, in the modern situation, uh... Well, that's its own mess. That is, uh, not being properly attended to. I'm not getting into it. I'm just saying that, like, if you... If you have people who are suspected slash, you know, named by others that you have caught as helping with Voldemort, and you then you're like, you know what? I'm going to give you the position of executioner of dangerous creatures for the Ministry of Magic. You're kind of asking for trouble. If you have somebody who you have established to have a violent history, so you're like, let's pay you to be violent, you kind of get what you deserve. But, yeah, this really sets things up in a rather ill light for the series to come, because this is go this kind of establishes the baseline of it's going to get worse before it gets better. There's only one major death in this book. That does not stand forever. Yeah. And it kind of comes down to a situation that... I hate to put it this way, but we have seen in real life all too many times how many people have to die before the people in charge take things seriously. And how specific a circumstance does it have to be before you can actually talk about it? Because, oh, Cedric died as an accident during the Triwizard Tournament. Oh, that's what we're going to say about this. Dumbledore, however, going to Dumble and just straight up says, no, he was killed by Voldemort. Your parents probably don't want, you, don't want me to be telling you this, but uh, I'm Dumbledore and I do what I want. And to be fair, it's probably for the best that they're at least getting to hear the truth from somebody. I was about to say, for all that we joke about Dumbledore gonna Dumble, Dumbledore's right to Dumble in this case. Yep, though obviously as the series goes on, we do have to question that more and more. But, yeah, all we know right now is that Dumbledore does his own thing to the point where there's a lot of concern for the Ministry about how much of a rogue agent he is at times. He is absolutely a loose cannon, but he is generally considered to be, like, the cornerstone of the Force for Good. It's just a question of how far are you allowed to take that? 
because that comes up with um, some of the other situations that will arise as we talk about this. How much HP do these things have? Enough to irritate you. But yeah, I'm not sure where else to go without just rambling about more uh, real-world parallels to uh, the unforgivable curses and hate crimes of the Wizarding World, because, well, it'll just get repetitive at that point. Yeah, I'm not sure what else to add myself. We've kind of drilled this down to the basic situation. Pretty much. So in that case, next time. See y'all then. <laughs>